So how did you approach it when you first went? That one that you, uh, if that was your first e- EWS, yeah, well, eighth so, place. Oh well, it wasn't my first one. It wasn't your first. So your if first I did that, one. How did you first... approach it? Because you're out of the game. Yeah. Did you approach it as like a series of mini downhills, or did you approach yeah. it like a new thing? I'm actually, and it's interesting. I went into it a lot more confident than when I was a downhiller. I went in going, I'm a fast rider, mm. and I've trained and I'm fit. And that for me, and obviously the, you know, some people say to do to do big adventure, like whether it's like ultramarathon stuff, you need a certain amount of experience, but you also need to be dumb enough to do it. Yeah. And that was me. I had like, I was like, well, I don't really know what I'm getting into here, but I think I'm great. So I went and did it. <laughs> <laughs> and I tried really hard and I was having me crashes and different things and then there was a really long stage and someone was like Dan it's really long just maybe treat it like you're chainless for a while and when you're really into the run then start to push so I spent the day doing like outside the top 50 kind of struggling and then the last stage I did like a top 20 and it ended up bringing my result right down to a 30 something because that was like a 20 minute stage or something huge Wow! but because I rode the whole top really kind of clean and tried to I genuinely didn't let myself pedal it made me become really present and focused and I had like amazing energy the whole way down because if you start excited and spit stressed your heart rate goes boom through the roof and you never recover you just stay in the exact same state oh mm. mate I so, love this stuff so, so it was quite interesting so yeah. over the years of racing EWS I'd love to know what your approach is because you clearly think about these things so yeah. your approach to a can we just do a stage? Because I'd okay. love to hear how you race an EWS stage. Yeah. EDR. Well, now, it has actually changed over the years. So now you just have to go as fast as you can. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Quite literally, but, yeah. But as as the last few years, like when I started working with Pink Bike, I was covering the events. So I'd be stopping and practice loads to get clips of people. I'd be putting up stories. I'd be GoPro on the stages in, 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 the, in an effort of hoping that I'd watch them, but actually to make mini edits, which I'd also be putting up on Pink Bike. So I ended up putting the coverage well and truly first and me as a racer secondary. Right. But it was also in the years where I started actually understanding the sport loads. What happened was, just funny, I ended up doing similar results for the first few years that I used to do, but with like less training and um, actually pretty bad practice because I'd prioritised the media so well. Right, so much. okay. But I did the experience then as a racer of like understanding like say bigger picture stuff. I'm like, well, if I mess up that corner, not the end of the world. There's another 150 ahead of me. So you're more relaxed about it. Now you're in a hurry because you need to be in a hurry if you're a racer. But you're not so precious about everything. Right. But then there's certain things you'll pick up as you ride down the track. You're like, that is serious. And the reason it's serious is you need to nail that corner because there's a long uphill grind after it. And if you nail that and you're in the right gear you're going to give yourself four seconds over what you would have been if you didn't take it seriously. So there's certain areas, but you just pick them up in- instinctively. Yeah. yeah. So as a racer, you yeah. kind of, in enduro, it's very important not to be like easily put off by a mistake. No, you can't let it affect you. You can't bring that down the rest of the stage with you. You need to, and and not saying it's defeatist to go, oh, look, I will make mistakes. Because some people are like, oh, you shouldn't have that attitude. You should be like, no, I'm going to be flawless. I'm sorry, you're not going to have a flawless day as an enduro racer. Things are going to happen. Yeah. Um, it is a bat- bit batshit. And like that's why when I talk to Polygon, like with f- f- design of their bikes and stuff, I was always like, look, we need to work on brake jack and pedal kickback and stuff like that because your braking can be quite ugly sometimes. So you're flying down a track and, and uh, we're not perfect. So sometimes you start to drop your head because you weren't dropping your heels and you're not actually looking as far forward then and you're not planning and then all of a sudden there's that corner just comes up and you're braking really hard because you've broke late. Um, and so your bike, you know, that's why the bikes change so much and they actually change to suit the sport because the sport isn't as polished as downhill. It can't be. Mm. You know, you've got anywhere from four to seven or eight stages in a day. Chattel this year, I think it was like seven or eight. You can't remember all of them. Can't remember all of them, but people have become really efficient, so they'll GoPro everything, every every stage, chop it up into mini edits, save them to your phone, into a folder. I'll always put them in a separate folder. So then I just go into that on the day, and then as I'm pedaling back up to a stage, I'm looking at the the stage I'm about to do. Whoa. So whatever I've just done, like your GCSEs Who's or, doing or that? your leave, you that? forget everything once you've done the test. It's, yeah, everyone. Really? It is so perfect. Like, it is so professional, and then you're seeing these clips of people, and I guess you're so used to it now, you see it, but honestly, they rode that track once. 
Yeah. And they are racing at that speed and making it look good. Mm. Um, and because I also leg it up, when I finish my race, I'd run straight back up to get the last 30 men and 15 women. So the second I get through, I'd run back up because I'm just outside that top, like that bubble, uh, which is great. And not because I tried to be in the bubble. Like at one point in my life, I actually was in that top three mm. bubbles. Great. But um, um, so remember that if you're watching. <laughs> um, respect me. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like it's, it's, it's mad. But I go back up and I watch everyone and I just like, yeah, I've ridden it myself and whatever. But I just have such respect for those riders because they are just, they're tired. They've been out all day. Um, maybe the feed station didn't have food or whatever. Mm. But like, they're just such professionals now. They're machines, and yeah. the speed they go is like bonkers. So this is the problem as well. It's like communicating what you're seeing to the wider audience, isn't yeah. it? Which I think is where now we have this yeah. issue. To, basically, yeah, trying to. Yeah, I know. And and the thing is, it was getting legs, but then more red tape because it changed hands with Warner Brothers involvement and stuff. And mm. and then you know this does not mean to be ar arrogant, but like say if there's just one of me, right? So a person that maybe has the eye for it and, and wants to do this because I was forsaking results to do this coverage. Yeah. You can't do both. You you can't. Why were you doing that? Were you doing that? You felt a responsibility or were you doing it purely because it's a job? If you want to see more, just uh, click here, is it? Is yeah, it's it up there. should be up there. Look about there. Yeah, about and there. And then there's um, other ones here. Other ones there that you might like. We're all looking after each other and that's Christmassy and that's the Ride Companion.